especially to my grade 12 learners. Today, I'm going to share with you how you can properly formulate your research problem and your research questions. In this is writing, your research problem is further clarified through your research questions. So to start off, let's define first what research problem is. So a research problem is a statement of concern in any area. It is a problem that needs immediate solution. Class, remember that the problem statement is one of the most crucial parts of the study, but this is because it gives focus and direction to your research. A well-written problem statement defines the problem and helps identify the variables that will be investigated in your research. So, the direction of your study lies in your statement of the problem, meaning once you define your statement of the problem, it will tell you what methodology you're going to use and what particular instruments you're going to use to gather data. And later on, you're also going to use that in the content of your discussion and your conclusions as well. You'll be making your conclusions, you will have to base it on your research questions. For descriptive type of research, non-experimental type, in framing research questions, students are advised to avoid whenever possible the use of yes and no questions. We avoid dichotomous questions because this tends to limit the scope of responses. Questions of this kind should be rewarded. For example, this question, Are the senior high learners of HSSP constantly attending synchronous classes? This is not a good type of research question because the responses will be limited to a yes or a no. Let's try to reword the question to get better information. So we can say, what are the factors why some senior high learners of Holy Spirit School do not attend synchronous or public classes? Or we can also say, what actions would the school or institution take to motivate senior high learners of Holy Spirit School to attend their synchronous or online classes? So again, we can get better information with this type of question. We get so creative in framing questions for us to get information from someone. Okay, so same with research, you have to choose the questions that will give you the information that you want from your respondents. So class, remember, even if you have a very impressive research problem, it is not the basis for a strong academic research. If you don't have a well-formulated research question, then you are likely to have an unfocused and weak research. So the research question must be narrow enough to be attained within the set time frame. What are the guidelines in the formulation of the research problem? Number one, the general statement and specific sub-questions should be formulated before carrying out actions in the conduct of the research work. Number two, state the specific sub-problems in interrogative form. Number three, the specific question should bear only one clear meaning. The answer to each specific question should be contributory to the development of the general problem statement. How do we formulate research questions for descriptive type of research? You can start your research questions with phrases like how often, how frequently, what percentage, to what extent, what proportion. What about comparative research questions? These are questions designed to help you identify clear differences between two or more groups based on one or more variables. You can start your questions with, what are the differences in? What about relationship-based research questions? These are questions used to describe an association or trend between two or more variables within one or more demographic groups. You can start your questions with, what is the relationship between? Or, what are the relationships of? How do we write quantitative type of research questions? Follow the format provided in the table. What is the profile of the respondents in terms of age, gender, and English subject GWA? Number two, know the level of your independent variables. Number three, make sure all areas of dependent variable are measurable in terms of the level mentioned in number two question what is the level of reading comprehension of the respondents in terms of decoding fluency and vocabulary skills number four construct the relationship or difference of personal profiles and dependent variable example is there a significant relationship between the personal profiles and reading comprehension of the respondents so guys i hope you are clarified 
if you still have questions, please drop your questions in our Google Classroom. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button below. Hope to see you in my next video and keep on watching. Bye!